Well, I'm afraid this bearing that I put in here, I didn't exactly put it in here with a view to getting it out again. And there's nothing... I can't actually access the outer ring of this bearing. So what I'm going to do is just put a, a drill, which happens to fit this exactly, in there and slowly push it out, bearing entirely upon the inner race. Uh, so probably we'll have to scrap this bearing. Well, I press that out in the vise uh, gently. Uh, I had to uh, apply a certain amount of force and then it suddenly gave and came out. Uh, easily so I guess it was um, slightly bedded into the Delrin I guess um, but testing it afterwards seems to be uh, exactly the same as the other one um, the one with the blue dot is the one that I pressed out um, and they both sound equally quiet and not grating uh, now that I've got it, got it out of the thing so I think what I'll do is skim a few thou off the ID that I was pressing into and re repeat. This is the uh, Bourne's EMS 22A50 Hall Effect Sensor um, Rotational Position Sensor that we've been using in the wind vane that's on the Woodstock boat at the moment. Um, I bought two of these, they cost £60 each, and I think this one failed for some reason. It's not intended to be waterproof, so I had it on the boat for a while and then it failed. I just thought, it obviously uses a Hall Effect chip inside here of some kind. It's definitely not the one that I've been contemplating using in the last uh, video. Um, but it must be similar, and I thought I'd break this open, now that it's broken anyway, and just see how they handle the magnet, what kind of magnet they use, and how close they have it to the Hall Effect chip. Not quite sure how, it's, how we get into it. That's just <coughs> a plastic case. So we've got a PCB here, and that's the thing that I need to get out carefully. I just wonder if I can loosen these terminals, which are getting in the way. So there is the chip. I wonder what it is. Of course, nowadays I can't read anything without a magnifying glass. Hang on a minute. So, right, using my Times 10 magnifier, recommended by the Royal National Institute of the Blind, this is an AS. 5040D, I think, and it's in the same package as the chip that I'm using. It's in a TSSLP16 package. It has one capacitor, actually, it has two capacitors. So that's that. And then in here, I reckon this is extremely close. This magnet, which seems to be circular in shape, is extremely close to this, the top of this chip. Because the chip 
rests on this ledge there where my fingernail is and that ledge is a couple of millimetres above the top of the magnet and then the chip sticks up one and a half millimetres above the circuit board so that's quite close now I wonder how they managed to use a circular magnet let's just scrape that and see if it is There's anything underneath there, or if that is itself the magnet. I think that is the magnet itself. And I wonder if there's a little bearing in there or what. There's a circlip here of a kind. I don't know if I can get that off. This is one of these things that's going to disappear into the landscape when I push it off. Never mind. Let's assume I can push it off. Yep, I've got that off. Ah, it's on the floor now. Right, so that means the magnet will hopefully will come out downwards and there is a couple of washers or well actually four three washers underneath that circlip and then there is a tiny ball bearing which I can't slide off because this uh, I hacksawed this axle off, this spindle off, so it's a bit rough. So, what I need to do is to. Um, well, maybe I can just knock it out. Can I knock it out? That would be the easiest thing, wouldn't it? So there is the magnet. Well, the shot and it's oh, um, what did I do? Actually, I think there are two ball bearings in this. There were actually two ball bearings. Ah, where's it gone? See if I can get this back together. Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. So there are two ball bearings. One at the top in that seating there, and one down there. And they are tiny. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight balls in the cage. So this is, on a, a much smaller scale, what uh, the design that uh, very similar to the design that Ollie made that uh, that I have made in Delrin, and that is the magnet. And I don't know exactly what kind of magnet that is or how strong it is. We'll hold the screwdriver up. quite satisfactorily. Well I was just wondering how strong this magnet is compared with the one that I was thinking of using. Obviously this is, this is better in the sense that it's symmetric, it's rotationally symmetric whereas mine is uh, not so. But, um, Um, I'm just trying to compare the force required to pull it away from my magnet to ah, 
My magnet is definitely stronger than this one. Which is, uh, in a sense, good. This is the data sheet of the AS5040. It says that you must exactly centre the magnet over the centre of the Hall effect sensor to a high degree of accuracy. I think it says within a quarter of a millimetre, which includes the placement tolerance of the chip. So that's pretty tight. It also says that the height above the surface should be between half a millimetre and 1.8 millimetre. So that's more relaxed. I reckon that um, I could arrange something like that. Of course, this is the data sheet for the chip that Bourne's uses, not the one that I'm using. But uh, my data sheet is slightly less informative on, on the question of what sort of kind of magnet you should use and where you should put it. So I'm interested to see this data. Well, I've designed this uh, um, circular PC board to take the uh, Hall effect sensor. Um, I say designed, it's just, it's just a board with two capacitors on it and a few pads for a cable to connect to it. Um, and I shall send that off to JLPCB and uh, when it comes back we can uh, actually install the sensor in uh, Ollie's uh, housing and uh, try and test it out. Well, that's as far as I've got so far. Um, a bit of a work in progress, I'm afraid. You may well be saying to yourself, uh, as I've got nothing to do except sit at home and work on this project, uh, why have you not made further progress? Well, the answer to that is that I don't normally cook I can cook a scrambled egg and a porridge in the morning, but that's about it. And uh, for the last 30 years, I have gone out to lunch every day at a pub. Not always the same one. Uh, but now suddenly I find myself having to uh, fend for myself for lunchtime. Um, so um, I find that a lot of my time is taken up for cooking. Um, so that explains why I'm not making more progress. Um, of course, this uh, coronavirus thing is uh, having a very big impact everywhere. Last time I was looking at this graph, which was a week ago, I was looking at this red graph of, of deaths in the UK on a logarithmic scale, and it looked as if I, if I projected this more or less straight line upwards. By the end of March, there would be 9,000 deaths in the UK. Since then, the curve has flattened off a bit, and it seems clear now that uh, by the end of March we're going to get something between two and 3,000 deaths, certainly not 9,000. That flattening is a bit more obvious um, down here on this graph, where I put the trend line in, in the dotted line. Um, that shows the overall trend over the whole period. Uh, but if I take off the early days, you see we get a much straighter line uh, at a uh, lower slope. So that is encouraging. It indicates, uh, to, at least to me at any rate, that the government's social distancing and other regulations uh, are beginning to bear fruit. Uh, although, of course, the deaths are still relentlessly rising. I don't think much can be deduced from the number of cases because um, the government's more or less abandoned uh, testing every case. Um, it, it says to us, if you've got symptoms, self-isolate and don't even bother to call 111. So how would they know how many cases there are? But the deaths at least are a hard, one hard fact we have to go on. And they look as if that they are getting more optimistic than they were a week ago. So we must all hope for the best. Keep well and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.